Hey guys, today I want to share with you a completely free digital signage solution that you can get for your church lobby to get some lobby TVs fired up and going all over Wi-Fi. And I love the solution from Proclaim because it is actually free. If you've looked into digital signage solutions, they want to charge you 10, 20, 30, sometimes 40, 50 bucks for every screen that you're going to use through them. There's some great solutions out there like bright sign and others but man uh i don't think most churches have that kind of money and so this option from faith life uh, is completely free you use their proclaim software you don't actually have to pay for anything this is what we've done in the times that i've used this i've installed uh, tvs in a school locally and it all runs off of either a web browser or my recommended way is to use a Fire Stick from Amazon. Not necessarily a Fire Stick TV, which I'll share with you why in the future, but you can also use an Apple TV if you have one of those laying around as well. And so let's dive into how you can get this going and the benefits of using this digital signs solution. First of all, not sponsored video. This is just a, you can try this and see if it works for you. First thing you're going to want to do is go into faithlife.com and get signed up for an account. It's free. You don't have to put in any credit cards or anything like that. And uh, I'm going to link to a couple of things in the description because I'm not going to walk through the nitty gritty of setting up your digital, digital signage feed and some other stuff. But once you are signed up, you're going to go over and download the church presentation software, uh, which is Proclaim, because to update your sign, you do that through the Proclaim software. So you could have a secretary up front download this onto her PC, and it's super simple. You're just managing the sign feeds with it. It's That part is not web-based. All right, so once you've downloaded that software and you've logged in, uh, the other thing that you're going to do is you're going to create your first group and for us we just called it a digital signage group and so if i go into that group now and i come down to admin of digital signage you'll see that i've got four different sign feeds and the cool thing about this is that you don't have to have one loop for your whole your whole system so currently in our our building everything is ran via sdi using the announcement layer of pro presenter but the downside of that is that every TV gets the same content. The benefit of something like this is that we could have a sign feed going in our kids' check-in area, a sign feed going in our coffee shop, a sign feed for all the other main displays, or maybe the youth room, that all have a separate sign feed that's happening. The other benefit of using this over some other options like USB sticks or Google Photos or things like that is that all of your TVs that pull up the sign feed stay in sync. So uh, let's just walk through now setting up a sign feed. You add a feed, you come in here and you can do a couple different things. For our CBC hallways, um, you can see that they've got options on here to like show Bible art and do Bible trivia. Show on air presentations is like if you're actually using Proclaim, it would show those. We're not doing any of that. We're not going to do any of these logos. We're not on this one going to show the information frame. I will show you examples of this in just a second. So stay, stay with me. And once you've got that done, then you jump into Proclaim's software. OK, so you open up Proclaim and you're going to go to file uh, open sign feed. And so if we go to that CBC hallways, you'll see that I've just got some things pulled in here. Uh, I like to just use pre-formatted JPEGs. You could do some design stuff in here, but uh, use Canva or some other, you know, Photoshop or whatever you're gonna do to pull your graphics into this. Uh, now, once you've got them on here, you're going to come in and you can set the duration. If you wanted to change, I think the auto is set for five seconds, but you could choose to advance this every 5, 10, 15, or however many seconds you want. You could use different transitions and uh, for the between the different slides. One of the great things about this setup is that you can actually choose start and stop dates for that announcement. So you don't have to you know, remember. It's like, oh crap, that thing is still going about the men's breakfast that happened last weekend. Nope, your secretary or you can, uh, can go ahead and just set those to start and stop whenever you want. So these are all just images except this one. Uh, this is a link 
to a web page. And you can al also come in and do add item and do a web page. Well, I pulled off the link for our uh, kiosk mode of our planning center calendar. So you could have a screen set up in your office that is just pulling this in uh, along with some other announcements. Uh, or maybe this would be important for you to have different rooms uh, have like what's going on in that room each day. I think you can do that through planning center calendar. The other way that you could do this is if we go up to our other sign feed, which is like a coffee shop one that I just set up, it essentially uh, has two slides. It has just a, hey, get your morning coffee. And then it also has just like a fake menu. So you could have your menu up big behind everybody. This one I have set up with the frame. And this is interesting. I use this in the school that I installed these in. Uh, and it has options for putting the weather, the clock, um, the date, a little saying, uh, a QR code for the Wi-Fi, different options like that. And you can add your own graphics into it as well for these different uh, little widget areas. And so that might be a cool option for your church. I've seen other people trying to kind of do this with ProPresenter's feed, um, but this is built in and free. Now, those are the benefits. Uh, and remember, I'll link to the description in the description, just the, the tutorials they give you that show you how to get the weather in the right you know region and all those different things. The limitations of this is that number one, it's based off of Wi-Fi. So if you don't have strong Wi-Fi, maybe try it and see. Uh, they, they do say that the first time it goes through your sign feed, it caches the images on the Fire Stick or the Apple TV. That way it doesn't need to re-download them every time. So that's interesting. Uh, you could try it and see. The other big limitation though right now, and I've talked to their support about this, is I cannot get videos to work. I've used this for many, many months in different ways, and the videos, sometimes they'll play once and then they don't play again. Sometimes they don't play at all on Apple TVs. So I would just stick to images or web pages or those different items that you can add in there. Play with it and see, but for, for a free solution, really the cost of a Fire Stick, um, which is about 20, 30 bucks, I will link to the Fire Sticks that we used uh, all over our building to test this out um, in the description below. That will be an affiliate link, you know, so I appreciate you using that. Um, the downside of using all these Fire Sticks is that you end up with like a bajillion remotes because Fire Sticks have to have that unique remote. But the reason I would do Fire Sticks over Fire Stick TV is if you want to turn your TVs off and on, I like having the Fire Stick actually plugged in with a USB to, you know, one of these little guys. Uh, so that way it's always on and your sign feed is always going. That way, when you turn the TV back on, it automatically starts again. And you can even get like TVs that have auto on and off schedules that start on the right input. We have some LGs that do that. Uh, that's something to look into. But I recommend doing the Fire Stick separately and powered separately from the TV. That way it's just always going. So I think this is a pretty cool solution. I've tested it out in multiple places. Uh, guys, if you found this video helpful, why don't you do me a favor right now, hit that like button. If you aren't subscribed to the channel and you're you know, looking for budget-friendly worship tech solutions, I'm always trying to share the things that I'm, I'm utilizing and trying in our church just to help you guys out one video at a time. So remember guys, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory. We'll see you in the next one.